Okay, so here's a quick video to convert um, access points from lightweight to um, autonomous mode. The reason why you're probably doing this is maybe you have some uh, small infrastructure and you don't have a wireless controller. You want a DHCP server to give these guys an IP and let everyone connect to it. Um, maybe you're um, at home and you have some from corporate, like in this case, and you say, hey, I can still use these um, even if I don't have a wireless controller. So the first thing you want to do is um, grab yourself a serial cable, console cable, and we're going to walk through this and I'll show you exactly how to do it and what to do it. So we've got a console cable there. Now you don't need the console cable, however it helps uh, because then you'll know when to release the button and of course to do additional programming. And then you have an ethernet cable. Now my ethernet cable is connected to, these, um, uh, to the uh, power over ethernet injector right because this is being powered by this guy uh, by this cable which is receiving power from two cords here so if you don't have a PoE and you're fortunate enough to have a Cisco um, catalyst switch like this which has PoE perfect it'll power it up if not you're gonna need an injector so nothing fancy there's just going through um, so that uh, Ethernet wire is going through here. We're going to use that for putty. And um, then I got my console cable, which is going to this crazy hub. Um, thank you, Microsoft, for including one USB. So nice. So you really only need these two. This is the console cable, and this is the uh, network cable. So the first thing you need to do, um, and I've kind of pre done this already, but you're going to need to open up your web browser, and you're going to need uh, two pieces of software. Uh, first, you're going to need PuTTY, so that way you can um, telnet into, actually serial into your switch, view the updates, and enter some commands. So just type in PuTTY once you're here. Um, I usually just download this version here, and then I download the, um, you can do 64-bit or 32-bit, stay consistent, but I did the 64-bit installer, and bang, bang, boom. This is the Windows installer, so if you're not sure, you know, how to um, correctly install. Windows installer is simple, and we'll go through that. The second part is you need a TFTP server. Um, people use SolarWinds. I like to use this server right here. It's quick, it's dirty, it's simple, and it's very limited configuration. Since I did the 64-bit version of PuTTY, I'll do the 64 version of the installer. So download this, and then you're set to go. The only other thing you're going to need, as far as a piece of software, is the actual firmware. So if we um, open up, so let's do this. Let's uh, start PuTTY and let's validate whether or not this even needs the firmware because that'll be really important. You know, does this have the lightweight on here or um, is this maybe already set up in uh, autonomous mode? So we can figure out that quite easily. So I've started, uh, I've installed PuTTY. So I'm gonna just go ahead and remove this download. That way we're not confused. And then we're gonna open it up and configure this puppy right here. Okay, so um, we're gonna hit uh, serial since that's how we're connecting. Uh, mine, it's COM3. I'll show you how to find that in a moment. You can keep everything here basically consistent. Um, there's some people say you can do stop bit one or two, but I've noticed that if I just leave it right there, it's fine. And so if you want to avoid having to enter all this information a bunch of times, if you go to session and you click on serials, and that's how we're connecting, and you can say, well, what do you want to save this as? Um, this is where you save the settings. So let's say I'm going to save it as Cisco settings, click save, and I'm done. Now, if I open up this guy at this moment, you're going to see that window showing up nice and clear, maybe. Okay, and uh, since we already have the, oh my lord, what's going on here? Since we already have the switch installed, um, if I just hit enter, you notice it says LWT AP06. So how do I know whether or not this has the lightweight on here? If I just type in show, show version, I believe that's how, it'll tell you right here whether or not you have the lightweight or not. Now, see here? This is the flash version, C1240. See how this says K9W8? This W8 is the important part. The, w, the 8 here tells you that this is using the lightweight version of the software and not the um, autonomous. So this will need to be um, upload. We'll need to get a new firmware uploaded on that. So we're going to hit Control C to quit out of all that fun stuff. And we're going to just move that to the right so we have that available. Right. So now we can communicate and we can see the updates from this guy right here again through this serial port. So the next um, 
uh, part would be to um, let's get our firmware ready. So what I did was I just put a folder on the desktop called AP. You can be anything, I just did AP. Now this is the firmware right there. So I'm gonna drag and drop that in the AP and I'll show you why we're doing that in a moment. <clears throat> now, what's important is once you download the firmware, it has to be in the correct name convention format. So we're gonna hit F2 here, or maybe we'll just do this way. And we're gonna remove all of this stuff and it says dot tar and then we're gonna say dot default D E F A U L T when we can when this thing starts up we're gonna hold a button and it's gonna look for anything called the dot default and that's how it's gonna know what it's gonna look for now clicking OK out of that you'll notice a couple of things you say oh, okay I named it as default but take a look at that icon get all the you get this icon it still thinks it's a tar so if you see something like that or let's say you're you're doing this a couple times and you're saying gosh it's not picking it up make sure you've actually renamed the extension dot default and not just part of the name here's what I mean if you go to view show the file name extension you'll notice oh look at that you actually named it dash tar dot default dot tar so we don't want to do that um, we want to get rid of this guy right here so it should just be named uh, k9 w7 dash tar dot default and you'll notice it's gonna then give you a prompt hey you sure you want to exchange the extension absolutely and now it's kind of blank it doesn't know what to open it up as perfect so we're gonna exit out of this guy right now we're almost done here next thing is we need to install uh, our um, TFTP so we're just gonna go through this with grace and install this puppy and then I'm just gonna remove this installer pack you can keep it but it's not necessary at this point so I'm gonna go ahead and run this as administrator and we need to do just a little bit of configuration now in order for this guy to pick up that information from the TF TP software and grab that package it's got to know where to go to and by default this is configured if you look on Cisco's site to like 10.2 sorry 10.0.0.2 um, type of IP all the way to dot 30 so here's what we're gonna do because as of right now it knows it's saying 127 so we're gonna exit out of this and we're gonna go to our LAN so let's go to control panel and we're gonna open up our network settings and then look at our network adapter. Do, 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 do. I'm doing this through my, uh, perfect. So this is my ethernet adapter. Let me disable my wireless. That would be a good thing. Okay, and then we're gonna go to properties and then we're gonna look for IP4. And now we have to change this up a little bit. So it's gonna be 10.0.0.0. I'm gonna just name it too. Uh, your computer can be anywhere between from dot two to dot ten, something like that, which is fine. I just I think if you follow this, you'll be fine. Your subnet mask two five five two five five two five five zero. Let me try and bring that a little closer. And lastly, your default gateway is going to be ten dot zero dot zero dot one. All right. So pause the screen here. Make sure you have this just like this leave the DNS uh, where it's at it's not necessary so you're gonna click OK you're gonna click OK and you're gonna click close now we really are almost done I promise all right last thing is let's start this piece of software up you notice it picked up 10.2 sorry 10.0.0.2 IP address which is what we wanted to and if you click down here you can see it's saying which which um, network adapter we're doing the surface ethernet adapter and that's because I'm using the Microsoft surface pro USB to network adapter It might be called something different for you so make sure you're using the right one um, and then what we want to do is remember we put that package that new firmware in that folder on the desktop under AP so if you click browse we're gonna scroll down into AP and click OK now when uh, we tell this, when the system starts looking for uh, um, the new firmware, it now, this software is going to say, okay, well, direct it to this folder right here, and then that folder has this one here. Make sure you only have one dot default, otherwise it's not going to know which one. Keep it nice, clean, and neat, and uh, we're set, actually. So, the last thing that we're going to do here, and this is going to be a little tricky since I'm holding the camera. Okay, looks like I'm going to need to start a new video, so let's do that. Okay, so this is video two. Um, 
I just, I'm going to have to stitch these videos together. So just a, a small recap. So we've got our um, putty starting so we can kind of see what's happening in the update. We have our interface with the correct adapter, so serial, um, and it's pointing to the correct folder where we renamed our file. So here's what we're going to do now is we're going to unplug this guy and that should shut off. And I got to do two things at once and this might be a little tricky with me holding the camera. But this, you have to hold the mode button before you plug in your Ethernet, and then you continue to hold the mode button until on the serial interface it reads out and says release the mode button. So that's what I'm going to do. So give me just one moment. So as you see, I'm holding the mode button, um, <clears throat> and I plugged in the Ethernet. And now, what we're going to wait for on this dialog box is a status update. And what we'll do is, as soon as it goes all the way through and it reboots, it's going to, there it is. So it says, button is pressed, waiting for button to be released. That's the last bit down there. Okay, so I've released the button, and a couple things are happening now. You can see that your default TFTP server has started showing that it's transferring files. So this tells you that you, it's been successful and um, it's updating the file, it's bringing it, as you can see here, that's the file that we uploaded, right? K9W7-tar.default, so it, it's found it. And it's probably gonna take about 10 minutes to actually transfer the files. There's a couple of uh, software configuration settings. So it's gonna run through all of this um, installation and packages. Once all of this is done, this guy is going to restart and then you can do another uh, show version and you will now see that it'll say K9W7, not the 8, but the 7. And you will have successfully converted this to an autonomous um, configuration. So you can, I don't know, hook this up to your, like I said, home DHCP server and, and use it as an extension Wi-Fi. It's a commercial grade, so it should be very well. Um, as I mentioned, this is going to take a little while, but once it's complete, It'll restart, and then and then you're done. Um, thanks for watching. Um.